why do you live or choose to live from your spirituality as opposed to the real world that scientists <laughs> create? Well, what I'm going to share with you today why I chose to become a metaphysical minister. There's a difference between spirituality and religion. And it's a huge, huge, huge difference. In religion, there's somebody who decides these are the rules, these are the thoughts, and these are the stories that you're going to believe because I'm telling you to believe them, and this is how you're going to practice them, period. So there's a boss who makes all your choices. The spirituality is what's going on inside. It's what's going on in your heart and how you choose to live your life. When you look back across time, whether it's Eastern philosophies or Western philosophies, long before people were recording their histories, their philosophies, or passing it down, from one generation to the next verbally, there was always a feeling of a connecting to the earth, to the heavens. By the way, I have a question for you real quick. If you are someone who believes in this thing called God that has a long white beard and wears a white robe and sits in judgment, how come God's up there? Did you ever notice when people are praying, they're looking up like God's up there in some realm? Well, where I come from and what I live by, there's only one energy in the world. Me, you, the earth, the space, the millions, there are actually millions of pieces of debris sharing that on our earth every single day, all cultures have a way, a belief system where they're connecting to outside forces outside of them. Well, for me, I believe there's only one energy and I'm part of that energy. And so are you. So is everything in your environment. So is all the stuff that you can't see all the invisible forces that I talk about all the time, that science is creating more and more devices that pick it up so you can see there's no such thing as empty space. There's no such thing as empty space. Everything is alive with different energies that vibrate on different frequencies. Where did I get tuned into all this stuff and why did this happen for me? Well, when I was a little kid, I would know things. I knew that I preferred being up in trees or climbing on rocks to being, well, even with people. I just loved being in nature. And as I grew older, I learned well, yeah, because all the plant life has actually a superior intelligence to us. Their communication is phenomenal. And the book I recommended recently, Braiding Sweetgrass, is a really, really great source for discovering and understanding that, as are many books I've recommended. It's the giving economy as opposed to well, let's destroy the land, which is what created all the global warning. When I was a little kid and I had all these knowings, well, I was a little kid in the 1950s. You couldn't talk about those kinds of knowings, those kinds of feelings, those kinds of experiences that I had. And in fact, in the 1960s, you still couldn't talk about it because people would have thought you were mental. Of course, 
when you're that way, you're actually the healthy ones, not following, not blindly following something that somebody decided is the truth. And they're telling you what you have to believe because it's their truth. Live from your heart. Your choice is in your truth. They live in your heart, not in somebody's heart who's standing on a pulpit and telling you what and how to believe in that practice, okay? Everything happens within. That's the only way that you can experience life. Everything is an electromagnetic force. And you can't feel or touch or see or taste anything outside of you. It happens because those energies go within your physical body where it gets altered into whatever the experience is. The first time I became keenly aware of the fact that I was having experiences that I couldn't share was the day that my dad left the earth. So I was sitting in the classroom, I was eight years old, and the universe told me to look at the clock, and I looked at the clock. It was 11.20 a.m., and I had just learned that I was going to get the chance to study violin in school. And I raised my hand and I told the teacher excitedly, this is so cool because my dad plays the violin. We have one at home. Only. That was the moment he left. But I didn't know that as a little kid. So looking back, I would say he was letting me know he was leaving and it was his way of being present to something that was important and meaningful. And so, yeah, I went on, I took violin lessons. And also my dad had been very religious, Judaism wise. So it became really super important to me to be very religious because I felt I was connecting with him. Now, I believe in metaphysical experiences, not religion. But I had to become very Jewish so that I could feel connected to him when he was in another realm. So what happened a couple of days after he left, after the funeral, I was looking up at the sky. I spend a lot of time looking at the sky. I love to watch birds. I love to watch planes. I love to watch anything that's flying. And I see this silver flash, literally a silver flash way up high in the sky that came out of nowhere. I went back into nowhere. It wasn't like it was a plane flying in and out of a cloud. It was just a blue sky, silver flash, and then gone. I knew, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that was my dad acknowledging me. And later when my mom left, I had an experience with seeing her leave her body as a golden ball. So I knew whenever I saw the golden ball, that was my mom. When you allow yourself to be open to these different experiences, you're going to recognize how often they come to you and the deep impact that they can have in your life. Finally, somewhere, uh, I don't know if it was the 1960s or 1970s, there were a lot of talk shows that I used to watch on TV because I love to learn. And there were actually shows worth listening to as there are today. You can find a lot of documentaries, a lot of interviews that really are educational as opposed to 
let's see how many views we can get. And that happens by being nasty or rude or something that I wouldn't watch. Anyway, I watched Shirley MacLaine in an interview talking about her book out on a limb. And she was saying exactly all the things I had been saying, I had been experiencing in my life, but could never tell anybody. So her book gave people for the first time, people like me, the opportunity to speak of our experiences without people saying, you're nuts. That was my first step. And I went on to read most of her books because she wasn't experiencing, well, she was experiencing some things that I hadn't, but a whole lot of what was happening in her world happened to me. I had this very strange experience of knowing, and I didn't even have to know the person I was walking by. I would just, a feeling would hit me that their father was going to have a heart attack and sometimes die, but in any case, have a heart attack in the next few days. I didn't even know the people, but I knew that was happening. When I was traveling to a weekend, at the time I lived in Virginia, and I was going down to, I think it was Atlanta. It was someplace down south. And I had the choice of going the route along the coast or going the mountains. Well, I love mountains. So I took off and went the mountain route. And what I didn't know was there was a blizzard going on in the mountains. So I drove right into it. There were cars off the road the whole way. I mean, off the road as in down ditches. And as I rode very slowly and just along hoped, there was nobody in those cars down the ditches. So I'm going along and it's really surprising how many people don't know how to drive on a snowy, icy road. So I'm right lane, right? And they're zipping by me as if it's a perfectly clear, sunny, dry day, just sipping by. And I just kept focusing on poking along, being safe. And suddenly I hit some ice and my car went spinning round and round. And I thought, oh Lordy, I'm heading over to the top of a ditch. Only the car stopped before getting to the edge where I would have fallen in the ditch. The car stopped with me facing the direction forward I needed to be facing so that I could get going again once I calmed down. That was one thing about that experience. The other thing, there were zero cars and zero trucks going down the road just for that period of time while I was spinning round and round. I got out of my car. I had a snow shovel in the car. It was March. I was going south. I shouldn't have had a snow shovel, right? However, the universe told me to leave a snow shovel in the car. I don't ask when I get feelings. I just follow them. So I got out of the car. I'm wearing open shoes. I'm going south and it's March. And I shovel off a path so I can drive back up on the road. I make sure the car is clear so I can see everything. And the whole time I'm doing that, no cars are coming down the road. No trucks are coming down the road. I'm perfectly safe to do what I need to do. And when I finished all of that, Along came a car stopped and asked if I needed help, but then I didn't need help. I knew that was just one more knowing that the universe is taking care of us in each moment when we allow ourselves to be open to the messages and to the experience. Our lives become so much richer and easier. They become a whole lot easier when you stop fighting what already is. 
So what happened after all of that stuff, or actually chronologically, it happened years before. When I was pregnant with my daughter, oh boy, I wanted a daughter. I always had the most wonderful, already had the most wonderful son anybody could want, right? And when I was pregnant, oh, I really wanted a daughter. So I had two dreams that I had a daughter growing inside. I didn't tell anybody because I tend not to share my experiences with people. In one dream, she had red hair. I didn't know that my grandfather had red hair. I knew my father-in-law had red hair. It has to be on both sides of the family for it to be passed down. So when she came out, I thought, why is her head covered with blood? <laughs> it wasn't blood at all. It was her red hair. But I had another dream. She came out. <laughs> she basically climbed out wearing a diaper and an undershirt. It was the easiest, fastest birth, which it was incredibly fast how fast she came. So those were two more reasons for me to follow the feelings in my heart, the knowings. Go on ahead to when I had the brain surgery, that if you've been following me for a while, you know I had a brain tumor and it was located in a really, really dangerous place for doing surgery. And the neurosurgeon, okay, ready for this, I was living in the Boise, Idaho area at the time. And the surgeon who was actually rated number one for this very particular, very specific type of brain surgery, he was living in Boise, Idaho at the time. Like me, he came from Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. He was raising his family in Brooklyn, New York, and wanted to find a different kind of place for his kids to grow up. So exactly the person I needed was there where I had chosen to live exactly the time when I needed him. Because of the danger of this particular location, he described to me a surgery that was going to take at least 10 hours. And he said it was so dangerous that there was a good chance it would take two days where one day you go in, take it out, and then wait until the next day to close it up. So he was saying expect a minimum of 10 hours on the surgery, which that's what I passed on to my daughter. So when the phone call came after only four hours, she later told me she was scared that I had died during the surgery. The surgery was done in four hours. I had asked the universe, I had asked my friends to see the tumor slide out easily. Like it was on a nonstick surface. And it came out and I was out of there in four hours. There are so many reasons I could go on and on and on, and what I want you to know is when you look across your life, you really pay attention to your experiences, you're going to discover you have knowings. You just know things that are going on in your world. I know lots of things about other people, and often they're strangers I don't even know. I know lots of things about me. I continue to know I'm guided. There were so many times and still are today when my body goes into a state and I'm very far from home and there's nobody around to help me and I need to get home. And I ask the universe and I ask my car to keep me safe and get me home. And I know I'm not driving. My hands are on the wheel but I'm not controlling it. And if you saw the movie out on a limb that Charlie McLean made all those years ago, you'll see an experience like that 
so that you'll have an understanding of how real it is for your car to know how to take care of you. Well, I forgot to stop and share something with you. Quick break here to let you know when I had the tumor and because of where it was located, it took out key nerves in my brain and my brain that control all kinds of really important functions in the body and also a main blood vessel on that side. So for 10 years, I had more than half my face inside my mouth. It was paralyzed. I couldn't blow my nose because I had no feeling, no control up here. It was really hard for me to speak clearly. It's still really challenging for me to swallow so that I don't choke. Breathing, speaking, there were all kinds of things from all kinds of paralysis. And fortunately, I knew a naturopath who was using stem cell patches. What are they? They're non-drugs. They're not putting anything in my body or on top of my body going in through the skin. It's just something that says, yo, body, here's some energy. Wake up and make your own healing happen. And in two weeks' time, the paralysis is gone. It was gone. I could speak clearly. I could blow my nose. I could breathe. All these things were happening because the universe directed me to that particular naturopath. Everyone can benefit from making their own healing energies and not having to worry about what's going in or on their systems. Contact me. Link is in the show notes. And we'll have a talk and I'll show you exactly what's going to be helpful for you, whether it's something that's hurting, something that's not functioning, whether you have having vision stuff or hearing stuff, whatever's going on for you, let's talk. Just contact me and we'll set it up. Now, here's the next thing that I found really, really, really exciting. When I had grandchildren and I was living in Idaho, I didn't get to see my grandchildren very often. So I decided I have got to come back and live in the East Coast and in New York, because that's where my son and daughter and my first grandchild lived. So I had this most extraordinary dear friend. When I need help, she's there. She flew out, helped me pack up, drove the truck, because I was afraid to drive. I never drove a 26-foot truck before. I think it was 22, 24. I drove those lots, but driving cross-country, I needed my friend's help. So she came out, she drove the truck, and we came back across the country. I did not have a place to live, and I trusted that the universe would show me the place. Now, fortunately, my daughter had a high school friend, and both the friend and his parents lived out in the area to which I was moving. And they offered for me to stay in their home for a few weeks until their guests came from out of the country. Well, my son told me I was nuts because he'd say, look, mom, here's a place you can go to. And you're not going to find a better deal than this price wise. And I said, no, that's not where I want to live. It wasn't speaking to me. It wasn't feeling inside like the place I wanted to go. I knew what I wanted. And along came the little house I wanted. See, from the time I was a little kid, I said to the universe, I don't care if I live in a shack, which wasn't the wise thing to say, just so long as I have land and water. 
So here comes this little house, which was really, uh, it was a little better than a shack. It was a cottage. And right across the street was a huge lake. But outside the door from my home was the Appalachian Trail. All the land I could ever want. So the universe knew what I wanted, and it brought me to that place. See, when you know in your heart what you want, why you want it, and you let the universe know, and you do that by picturing and adding emotions that use all your five senses. Imagine yourself, like for me, in the home. What am I seeing, touching, smelling? Go to the refrigerator, take out a cold drink. Going out the door and go hiking. There are like six different entries to the Appalachian Trail right outside my door. And on the Appalachian Trail, there's no cell phone coverage. And I didn't have a friend. Unfortunately, the people I knew out there, they were in hikers. So I go by myself on the trail. And I trusted the universe would always take care of me. Because I didn't know where I was going. And I trusted I wouldn't get hurt. Because sometimes there were very dangerous uh, climbs on some of those trails. And it's one thing to go up, it's another thing to come down. And I never got lost. Even when I didn't know where I was going, the universe always led me safely back to the house. Oh, and so you know, that really good friend of mine, I would always take a picture and send it to her, right? I text it to her, I'd say, this is the entry to the trail that I'm taking now, and I'll be back. And I would always, I'd go out for a half hour because I knew I needed a half hour to come back. So I'm not dumb. I do take care of myself, but I know it's the universe taking care of me, just as the universe is always taking care of you. I thank you so much for joining us here today so that I could share with you why it was so important for me to be a metaphysical minister. And frankly, many, many years ago when I first started doing energy work, I thought, okay, I got to be a minister so I can put my hands on people. And for some of the work I do, I need to be able to put my hands in their mouth. And you can do that, and it doesn't cost you anything. But that wasn't teaching me how to be a metaphysical minister. But when I lived in Idaho, I had an opportunity to go into an ordination class. And I got to learn and get all the documentation and everything so that I could become a medical metaphysical minister as I really, really wanted to be. And in fact, you're joining me here today for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. Remember to join our Facebook group where you can get some extra little pieces of information, you can ask questions, you can make a friend, and also go ahead and join our community, because when you do, you get to get on a live video call with me every single month. I love to know who you are and where you're listening from. I know we're listening to in 36 countries, but I don't know who's listening. And I don't know where you live in those countries. And in case you haven't figured it out, I love connecting with people. I love to connect with you. So let's make it mutual. Tell me who you are and where you are 
when you're listening or watching and when you go to our website, you can see or listen to any of our well over 100 episodes. You can also follow my link to get the Audible book of your choice. Now, I've recommended this before. I'm going to recommend it again because it's about knowing. It's about tuning in. It's braiding sweetgrass. And it's all about the whole indigenous cultures who always lived off the land, and that's why they lived for hundreds and thousands of years without leaving a carbon footprint, without damaging the earth, without polluting the water or the land. It's a way of life, and you'll find indigenous cultures like that all over the world. And I recommend so highly, grab your copy for free over at Audible. Get your free download and learn about how to be a protector and a supporter. It's our world. Our world is being destroyed. There are some places that it's not even certain they can be repaired because of what industry did. Educate yourself. Live knowing you're connected to the land. And the land is gifting you with everything that you need to sustain you. Remember to enjoy every moment because nothing Nothing happens outside of you. It all happens within. If you haven't done so already, fitting right in with my talk today is the gift I made for you, Step in a New Direction. Because if you're newly exploring your spiritual path or going a new direction with it, I wrote this very short document that you can go through, give it some consideration, whatever fits, use it. What doesn't fit, kind of store it away. And you know what? It will sprout and grow when the time is right.